Displacement maps from ZBrush are fully supported in Lightwave 9 and can be applied to an object using a displacement node in the node editor. In this scene, I have a low-res head model that we're going to use a displacement map from ZBrush to displace the geometry to add fine details to the model. I'll do an F9 test render to see the results. And as you can see, we've rendered over a million polygons in around 10 seconds. Let's take a closer look at how this is set up. I'm going to go ahead and close these windows and open up our object properties panel and come over to, well before we go over to the deform tab where we're going to see the displacement setup, I'm going to go ahead and change my display level to 5 just so we can kind of get a basic idea of what it's going to look like when it renders even though we have a setting of 20 for the per object level for our subdivision level when it renders. If we come over to the deform tab we'll see the new edit nodes option. Click that to open up the node editor. This is the flow that we're using to take advantage of the displacement map from ZBrush. We have our image node that is using the image created by ZBrush to displace the geometry. And here's the information for that, for the image node. We have the subtract node, and the subtract node we've added and we've used an input of 0.5. And the reason that we need to, to use the subtract node is that in Lightwave, we usually use black as nose displacement and white as full displacement. But in ZBrush, it's different. ZBrush uses black as negative displacement, mid-gray as no displacement, and gray as full displacement. We have our multiply node, and what our multiply node allows us to do is it allows us to control how far we're going to displace the geometry. We're using the normal option on the spot info node to control what direction we'll be displacing the geometry in using the polygon normal of the object. We use the scale node to combine the distance we want to displace the geometry and the direction we want to displace the geometry and then we feed that into the displacement node giving us the final result. If we want even further control we can combine this with the adaptive pixel subdivision. Let's close our node editor and we'll move back over to the geometry tab and for render subpatch level, let's change it from per object level to per polygon level and open the texture editor. Let's use the same UV map and the same map. I'm going to use the UV map that we use for our displacement and for the image I'm going to use the same image so that we can control the subdivision level based off of this image. What I need to do is use a gradient to control it. So I'm going to add a gradient and I'm going to keep it to previous layer so that it'll use this image and I'm going to change, I want the highest value to be let's do 30. Let's crank it up to 30 and we'll set that here as well and then in the middle let's do something like um, let's try 3 as our, our lowest setting. Let's close these windows and do a test render. So in about three seconds we have less than a million polygons. We're working with about 30,000 polygons and we have controlled areas where we need a lot of geometry. Uh, we have it denser and where we don't need as much we have it less dense. Let's take a look at a wireframe shade render so that we can uh, take a look at the denseness of the mesh. So as you can see, we have a lot more geometry in here and a little less here depending on the distance of the mesh. Now, we can control how much detail based on the values in the gradient. So if we want to get some of that detail back in the hair here, well, we would just increase the value of the white areas of on, on the gradient. And if we want less in this area, well, then we would decrease the value in the black areas. Using displacement maps from ZBrush along with adaptive pixel subdivision gives you precise control over how you render your displaced geometry in Lightwave 9.